Hi, this is Robert Valenius. This is video th 2, uh, Analysis Design of a Flyback. This is a follow-up to the last video, video 30, uh, 31, uh, where I talked about reset and the turns ratio and so forth. And I had mentioned that uh, you have to be careful with the turns ratio because uh, if you don't use the right turns ratio and you're using, let's say, a MOSFET with a low-rated uh, VDS, uh, you may damage your MOSFET and it will surely overheat. Okay, so I'm going to show how selecting the wrong turn ratio can damage your MOSFET. And I'll show a simulation of that. And if you don't have the right turn ratio uh, because you're not building or winding your own transformer, let's say that you are using a digit key transformer that has a uh, uh, that slightly different turns ratio well you need to calculate or you need to check what your reflected voltage across your transformer is okay so you want to make sure that your MOSFET can handle it okay so that's what we're going to do uh, try to uh, make you aware of that okay so here's a schematic and uh, we're going to say that we're using a turns ratio of 30 turns to 15 turns okay and this satisfies this equation and so I said that this is the the right way to set your turns ratio okay so, so basically this is the same thing as using 12 volts and uh, 26 volts okay or actually 24 volts Okay, so we'll do 24 volts right there. So that would be the same turns ratio. Okay, so generally, if you use this equation and but you don't have a you have a off the shelf transformer and you don't have the exact turns ratio. And if you have a transformer that's a different turns ratio, you need to check your drain voltage. And make sure that your MOSFET can handle that. So let's go ahead and use this example that we're we're going to be using. Okay, let's turn this. Okay. Okay, so we're going to use 24 volts with the output voltage of 12. So it's going to be 12, 24. And you can use, let's say, a turns ratio of 15 to 30. So that would be fine. And remember, this is, you figure this by, I believe, this equation, which is your voltage across the transformer, the time divided by your B operate or B sat times the effective area of the transformer so that's where you get this uh, NP that would be the primary turns okay once you select the core the voltage that you're operating the time this would be the time on then you get this number and then you select uh, an appropriate secondary to give you the ratio that you need. Okay, so we got that. So then the equation to check the drain during to T off is Vn plus Vl. And let's see where that comes from. Okay, so you're going to have this voltage across your Vn. And then when it's reflective, this is negative, this is plus so you're going to have a voltage that is reflective and it's going to be negative so if you notice it's this voltage plus this voltage will equal the drain okay so V drain VD equals VN plus VL reflected okay so we're up to this equation and then the reflective is really basically the reflected from the output and we 
which is right there. Okay, so it's V out multiplied times the primary divided by the secondary. Okay, now if you use this equation, then this simplifies to this, or actually simplifies to this, which is pretty neat. So all you have to worry is if if the ratio is set correctly, if you have 24 volts in here, then you're going to have 48 volts at the drain. So in this case, let's substitute here, put the 24. That'll be 48 volts at the drain. Okay, so let's say you find a transformer that's different. Let's say the only thing that you have at hand is a three turn secondary with 30 in the primary. That would be a 0.01 turns ratio. Okay, so let's plug in the numbers and see what happens. Okay, so again, let's go ahead and use We'll put the 24, 24, 24. So when you plug in the numbers, you'll see that this is actually 10 times. So you, so you end up 120 volts. This is the reflected voltage. And that's going to appear. in series or it's, it's going to add so you're going to get 144 volts yeah 144 volts approximately okay so that was approximate okay so that means before with the turn ratio of 0.5 you have 48 but now with a ratio of 0.1, you have 144. That's a huge difference. Okay, so what's going to happen? Well, let's say if you use a IRF 150, it has a VDS rated 100 volts. Okay. Obviously, it exceeds the rating. Okay. And in fact, because it, it exceeds the rating, so basically, it's greater than VDS rated. Your MOSFET it's probably going to get hot and you might blow it and during the time that it's heating up V out will never reach in this case we're hoping that we get 12 volts you're not going to get 12 volts okay why because there's a body diode across the MOSFET and it acts like a zener and it clamps the voltage to about a hundred volts so that means this drain in order for the voltage to work has to go all the way to 148 right this has to go 148 for it properly generate 12 volts but it can only go up to a hundred volts because of the zener action of this it's kind of like a zener okay and it means that during the time off okay typically during the time off 
MOSFET is off, which implies no current. But in this case, because the drain or this uh, reflected voltage is higher than 100, your MOSFET is actually conducting. It's not the MOSFET, but it's the body, di by body diode. It's going to conduct. Okay, so you're going to have conduction during T on and T off. And that means your MOSFET is going to get hot. Okay, so I've had a lot of customers, a lot of students tell me, hey, my transistor is hot. Okay. We'll be sure that you check this. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a little simulation. Change this to 24. And let me see if I can add a 150. And I have to be careful here because there's two types of models. There's a model without the body diode, and there's a model with the body diode. Hopefully, I select the cor the correct one. We'll find out. If we see that the drain is clamped at 100 volts, then we know that we that I selected the right uh, MOSFET. Okay, so here's the simulation. Now we look at the drain. And if you notice, it is clamped to 100 volts. Look at that. And notice your output, you don't have 12 volts. You have 6.8 volts. Okay. And during this time, your MOSFET will get hot and it will probably short. Okay, so what do we do? So let's try a IRF 640, which is a 200 volt FET, and see what happens. Okay, here's the simulation. Okay, so now if you notice, we'll go to steady state here at the end. And if you notice, let's go ahead and zoom in. So now, let's look at the output. We're close to 12.02. And we check the voltage here 153 volts. I calculated. Let's see how much did I calculate? Uh, 144, and this says 153. Okay, so it's in the ballpark. So this tells you that it doesn't, it's not clamping because it's rated at 200, and because it's not clamping it, your 12 volts is allowed to come up to voltage. So it comes up. If I let it run, it'll settle down and you can see where it plateaus. But anyway, this is what I wanted to make sure that you guys are aware of that if you don't use the right turns ratio, be sure you check the voltage that your drain is going to be looking at. Okay? So if you have any questions or any comments, uh, email them to my email address posted uh, below here on the video, or you can post them uh, on my YouTube channel and I'll try to answer them. Uh, thank you for watching.